hello everyone this is Julia and this is actually my first spoken video we're going to talk today about string skipping tapping arpeggios so it's a really cool technique I use it quite a lot let's just hear how it sounds I'm gonna play a solo which I brought uh, sort of quickly on a backing track if you like the sound of it stay a little longer so I'm just gonna teach you how to to recreate the scores on the fretboard and use them as you like it of the harmony that I was playing the solo on we go from B flat minor 9 to B flat minor 11 then it modulates to G flat major I'm actually playing an A flat major triad second inversion over B flat and then we play the same chord we were playing before the B flat minor 11 if we refer to it from the A flat major triad we can also call it A flat sus4 these are the chords anyways then we go to E flat minor 6 and E flat uh, minor 7 and that's the main sequence the second time through uh, at the end we're actually going to the 5 dominant so we're playing F, uh, F7 F7 sharp 9 after uh, G uh, flat diminished so um, right So strings, skipping, tapping, arpeggios. Uh, our first example, it's a C major arpeggio. You can see it here. So which strings are involved? A string, G string, and high E string. I personally use my index to tap. You can definitely use other fingers, whichever is best for you. We're going to tap with our left hand index, our root note on the A string. Then we're going to tap and pull out with our right hand index, our fifth G on the same string. So that's the sound we want. We're going to skip a string. We are on G, right? We don't need to move the position of our left hand. We're going to use to tap our octave, our ring finger this time around. So we're going to tap it and we're up there and we're going to tap and pull off our major third with our right hand index so last string high e again let's not move the position of our left hand we're going to tap our fifth with our left hand index and then we're going to tap and uh, pull off our last octave last c note with our right hand finger again so let's hear it right all together slowly the whole arpeggio second example is going to be a d minor it comes right after c major in the harmonized c major scale our shape changes slightly because we have a minor third but the technique is exactly the same so we're going to tap uh, roots and fifth on the a string skip a string octave and minor third on the G and then we have fifth and octave again on the high E right so we have left one other quality which is diminished it happens in B chord in a C major harmony uh, landscape so what are we adding we are adding a flat five so the shape again changes slightly these are movable shapes right we're calling them c major d minor because we start on those specific roots but we can apply that very same shape to other chords 
I'm going to actually play the whole harmonized scale using all these shapes so you can actually hear that and look at the shapes all together. <laughs> Seventh chords. So same technique, but adding the seventh. Uh, they're actually easier shapes because they are closer together, as you can see. First example again is going to be C major seven. We're going to play roots and major thirds this time on the low A string. Seventh and octave for C major. It's a major seventh on the uh, G, and then fifth. And seventh, major seventh, for C major again on the high E string. Technique is always the same. We're going to uh, keep the position of our left hand uh, steady. And we are moving uh, around with our right hand more, right? So let's look at the shape and try to recreate that one with our tapping technique. Right? As you could see in this case, uh, in this case, I actually used my middle finger to grab the major seventh. Next example, D minor seventh. Shape changes slightly because we have a minor third. Right? We're missing other two qualities actually. We're missing G dominant, which is the five degree of the scale and does have a flat seven and the half diminished B minor seven flat five for the B. G uh, dominant with the flat seven. That's it. And the B minor seven flat five. So again, same thing, just slightly different shape. We have root note and minor third on the uh, A string. Then we have flat seven and octave on the G, high E, flat five, and the minor seventh again. Right? And the flat five, and now I'm gonna harmonize the whole scale, I'm gonna play the whole harmonized scale, it's gonna resolve so well on this C major seven. Another pretty cool way of uh, connecting the arpeggios when harmonizing or when switching arpeggios in, in a solo is going up through an arpeggio and down uh, through the other one. In this case, I'm going to switch the metronome feel. I'm going to have it going at 90. So in this case, what you're going to hear uh, is going to be uh, 16th note uh, triplets. <laughs> All right, so that was it, guys. I really hope this was useful for any of you. Please feel free to share this lesson. If you liked it, uh, let me please know. I'm doing this for you. Let me know your impressions, your questions. If you'd like to learn anything else down in the comments, you can also uh, write me on Instagram. My Instagram is linked in this video's description. So yes, thank you so much for listening and uh, hopefully I'll do this again soon for you. Bye.